What's up gamers? Hello, hello, and welcome back. How have you guys been? Hope you've been doing well. Uh, anyone catch the NBA draft? The Knicks, back at it. What is you doing? Anyways, today we have something special. Education? No, a shoe, another grail. If homeboy comes through with these, homeboy's gonna like. This is the homeboy Jordan 1 NRG. Homeboy. This sneaker was created through Virgil's collaboration with Nike's NRG department, which is basically Nike's lifeline for all things hype. The old fuck you department. Kinda rude, but they do produce some heat. I mean, you can't go wrong with an all white sneaker. Might be the best looking of the three. The Chirax are for sure the most iconic though. So for this video, we're gonna be making another legit checking QC guide, highlighting some of the key differences between a rev and a retail. Huge thanks to the OG factory for sending these out. And if that didn't give it away, these are an OG batch. So just like last time, this should be a good one. All right, let's get into the sneakers. It doesn't smell like ass. Like always, starting things off with the shoe box. It's a pretty basic Jordan 1 box with a nice window cutout on the top. The first thing you wanna look for on the box is the sizing tag on the side. The suggested retail tab should be flapping around. Shouldn't be stuck down like the rest of the sticker. All right, let's take a little peek. Show me the money. Ooh, yeah, that's on me. Should have knocked first. Let's get into the shoes now. Got this nice see-through plastic shoe paper with the off-white text on there. They're looking spicy. Also, if I do sound a little bit out of breath in this video, it's because I just pounded a baked potato. So just be warned. These also come with a bunch of different laces. Yeah, let's get these out of here. Smells like a shoe. Now that we got the actual shoes out here, let's begin with the overall silhouette of the shoe. Since we are dealing with one of the higher end batches here, you won't really see any differences in the overall silhouette of the sneaker. I mean, they have been working on this model for quite some time now, updating the batches as they go, so they pretty much have it down by now. Here's a quick look at the zip tie, the nice powdery blue color, and the off-white text there. Let's take a closer look at the toe box here. For the toe box, you just wanna make sure the overall shape is nice. You want a nice slope on the toe, and you don't want it to be too puffy either. Just like on the Chicago's, you want that exposed foam so the holes can fray over time. Unlike on the UNC colorway. That one has kind of a UV protective film over it. Yeah, the toe box looks really good. Everything checks out there. It's like an icy blue and white. It's so clean. All the materials on this shoe look really nice. The leather pieces don't feel as soft as on the Chicago colorway, but they're still nice and they look great. Up next, let's take a look at the ghost stitching. <laughs> One of the easier things to look for on the sneaker. You're just looking for the pattern and the depth of the holes. On this pair, the holes are too shallow, but the pattern is good. If you're legit checking these, I wouldn't depend on this too much because it can be pretty easily fixed with a needle. Moving to the swoosh. The overall placement of the swoosh looks perfect. The stitching at the back there could be a little bit higher, but other than that, very nice. Also, as you can see by the tail of the swoosh, there's a bunch of guide marks. Super easy call out, but these can be taken off with acetone or even just a blow dryer. The blue stitching isn't too tight, should be a little bit wider though. The stitching up at the front of the swoosh looks decent, but the location of the stitching needs to be pushed forward maybe a couple centimeters. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the swoosh. The cut of the swoosh is nice, nice and precise. The material's good. Yeah, moving on. What do we have next? Now let's take a quick look at the 85 text on the inside of the wings. The font is really good and the quotation marks are nice. Also the smudge of the text is really good as well. On some of the other batches, you'll find uh, the quotation marks too long and the overall font will be too skinny. These look good though. Here's the wings logo on the outside of the shoe. For this one, you're just looking at the embossing and the location and angle of the wings logo itself. The location and the angle are really good but the embossing might be a touch too intense. It's hard to tell, but on the edges of the wings, you want the feathers to be softer, like the inner ones. On the right shoe, it looks really good. Actually, this might just be a, a shoe to shoe type thing. Moving to the midsole text, air. Let's see. For the air, you just want it centered on the midsole with the same amount of space above and below. Pretty consistent from shoe to shoe. They might be a touch high. Even on the retails, it does vary from shoe to shoe though. All right, now let's take a look at the laces. Shoelaces. 
I read good. For the shoelaces, you're just looking for the text and the angle that the shoelace kind of comes into the aglet part right there. For the text itself, the font is a bit too bold. Bold, bold. Should be taller and skinnier. Not very noticeable on foot though. These do come with four other sets of laces too. We got a black, purple, orange, and an icy blue. The purple and the icy blue are so clean. It goes so well with these. Now for the medial text. For this, we're looking for the placement, the smudging, and the font. This is gonna be the best indicator between a rep and a retail. For the font, font, ooh, it's my wrist. Just straight away, you can see the font is too skinny. On the retail pairs, it's gonna be bolder. As for the smudging and the placement, those both are pretty good. Yeah, just look for the overall boldness of the font. Should be more bold and more squished down. Actually, no, not squished down, just more bold. It's too thin. Pretty easy to see on the 1985. All right, now moving back towards the heel of the shoe. Let's check out the heel pattern. It gets really nice. On cheaper batches, you'll see the pattern is way too big, but on the OG batch, it's perfect. Nice randomness of the little hashes there. Also on the back, you wanna see the length or how much space is in between this little heel spot there. Bull sneakers check out. Another little guide mark there above the leather piece. Easy call outs there with the guide marks. Time for the foam. We're just looking at the thickness and the distressing at the collar part of the shoe. You want it to look a little beat up with the raw cut on the inner foam. Just like on the Chicago's, these look really good. Nice, slightly worn look, but not too crazy. On this NRG colorway, the blue tint is really, it's such a good combo. I think it's still possible to find a crispy dead stock pair with the blue tint on it. So the blue tint on the foam isn't as much of an indicator. It's still a relatively old shoe, so still watch out for that. But uh, yeah, it's not as important as it was on the Chicago's. On the side of that tall tongue, we have that orange Nike Air Tab. Yeah, everything's very nice. That is uh, the easiest call outs on this shoe from a rep versus a retail will be the ghost stitching, the medial off-white text, the shoelaces text, the tint of the white foam, and the guide marks. Mmm, that's a good comb. That is my legit checking QC guide for the off-white Jordan 1 NRG. Let me know what you guys think if I missed anything in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. This one's for the OGs. Bring bring hello, these nuts. Oh yeah, last weekend, if you're ever near Tahoe, um, there's this pie shop on the way there called Iketa's. Their pies are so good. Also, they got dope stickers. Check this out. Why am I so hot?